Headaches are a type of pain in the head, and they can also be a pain in the neck. And there are two main types. The first are called primary headaches, and they're more common. These are chronic or recurrent headaches that account for over 90% of all headaches. Some examples are migraine headaches, tension headaches, and cluster headaches. The second type are called secondary headaches, and these are more acute and come from a specific underlying cause, like a serious head injury or a brain tumor. So normally throughout the body, there are these special neurons that act as pain receptors. These neurons convert a painful stimulus into an electrical signal that conveys the feeling of pain to the brain. The brain itself doesn't have pain receptors, but nearby tissues in the head and neck, like the blood vessels, meninges, and muscles, do. These pain receptors might be stimulated by a variety of things, such as blood vessel spasm, like in vasculitis, increased pressure, like from a tumor, inflammation, like in meningitis, or increased muscle tension, like in temporomandibular disorder. That helps explain the pain in secondary headaches. Now in primary headaches, the exact mechanisms are still unknown, but we know tension headaches are the most common. It's called a tension headache because it feels like a band is squeezing down on the head, applying constant pressure or tension. The pain is mild to moderate, can last for a few hours, and usually there are no associated symptoms. Tension headaches are usually triggered by stress, lack of sleep, and dehydration. Imagine being late to work right after a night of drinking heavily and not sleeping much. Migraines are the second most common primary headache. They're often preceded by symptoms like irritability, depression, and fatigue that can begin hours to days before the headache itself. Sometimes there can be an aura where people experience strange smells, lights, visual disturbances, or even hallucinations before the onset of the migraine. The migraine itself usually feels like a pounding or pulsating, typically localized to one side of the head and can last from hours to days. As if this wasn't bad enough, these headaches tend to come with nausea, vomiting, irritability, pain, or discomfort with lights, sounds, and smells, called photophobia, phonophobia, and osmophobia, respectively. During childhood, individuals can have nausea and vomiting without the headaches, and that's called an abdominal migraine. After a migraine's over, it can leave people feeling sore at the location of the pain and generally fatigued. To remember the main features of migraines, you can use the mnemonic POUND, where P stands for pulsatile headache, O stands for one day duration, U stands for unilateral, N for nausea, and D for disabling. Although the underlying mechanism causing migraines isn't well understood, there are some clues. Concentrations of the neurotransmitter serotonin increase during the aura, triggering vasoconstriction, and then decrease to lower the normal levels during the migraine attack, triggering vasodilation. This change in the blood vessel size may be a trigger for pain receptors, causing the headache. The initial vasoconstriction may also trigger cortical spreading depression, which is a phenomenon when the brain becomes hypersensitive to certain stimuli, like lights, sounds, and smells. In young women, migraines are often associated with hormonal shifts that occur during the menstrual cycle, starting up in adolescence and becoming less frequent after menopause. Migraines are often associated with specific triggers like the smell of cigarette smoke, foods like chocolate or cheese, and drinking wine. Even sleeping too much or too little can sometimes be a trigger. Finally, there are cluster headaches, which is where headache pain comes and goes, sometimes with clusters of 8 or 10 in a day. The pain is extremely strong, like a shooting or stabbing pain that's usually around one eye, and it can even awaken individuals from sleep. They usually happen at the same time each day or night, so they're sometimes called alarm clock headaches. Each cluster of attacks can last from minutes to hours and comes with autonomic symptoms like a swollen eyelid, red eye, tearing, or a runny nose. Some individuals develop a certain triad of symptoms, a constricted pupil or meiosis, droopy eyelid or ptosis, and decreased sweating or anhydrosis, and together this is called Horner's syndrome. Some individuals have headache-free periods that can last months to years. Finally, cluster headaches are more common in men, and there are usually no clear triggers. Diagnosing a primary headache is usually based on the description alone. Sometimes neuroimaging and laboratory tests are used to make sure that it's not a secondary headache. For primary headaches, there are two treatment approaches. Acute treatment, like acetaminophen and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to help manage the pain, and preventative treatment to keep headaches from happening in the first place in individuals that have severe debilitating headaches. 
For tension headaches, pain medication can be used acutely, and improving sleep habits and reducing stress, as well as tricyclic antidepressants in some cases, can be helpful in preventing them. For migraines, acutely, pain medications work best if they're used at the first sign of an attack, during the early symptoms or aura. If the pain is very severe, tryptans or ergotamine, which are serotonin agonists, can be useful because they mimic serotonin and cause vasoconstriction. Migraine medications are sometimes used with caffeine to be more effective. For preventative treatment, there are many options, including beta blockers and calcium channel blockers, tricyclic antidepressants, and some anti-seizure medications like valproate. For cluster headaches, acute attacks can be managed with oxygen through a face mask or by taking tryptans and can be prevented with medications like verapamol. All right, as a quick recap, primary headaches account for 90% of all headaches, and they don't have a specific or known cause. They include tension headaches, migraines, and cluster headaches. Tension headaches are mild to moderate pain that feel like a band squeezing the head. Migraines are moderate to severe pain attacks that are pulsating, mostly unilateral, and can have associated symptoms like nausea, vomiting, and photophobia. They're also sometimes preceded by auras. Cluster headaches are severe pain attacks around one eye that come and go at the same time every day and can have associated autonomic symptoms. Secondary headaches have an underlying cause, which might be life-threatening and therefore must be treated in time. 